As we continue with the 2018 induction ceremony, can we have Cheryl Klein Obelar front and center, please? And as she strolls on over, the bus is here again. And there she is. A bit of a delay as Chris Vaccaro is asking her for exact change. Come on, cut it out. A brief bio of Cheryl Klein Obelar from Bellport High to the University of Houston. A ton of things accomplished along the way. As you view some of what she's done, keep in mind that Cheryl set records no matter where she went. We learn more about Cheryl Klein Obelar now, gazing at some photos. And in a nutshell, that she can easily crack in her bare hands, she basically went from the shot put to sheriff. A current photo of Sheriff Klein Obelar in Guilford County, North Carolina. Next photo, who's standing next to her? Yes, a younger Regis Philbin. Never knew he was younger, thought he was born 70. For Cheryl, Bellport High School track and field star from 1980 to 84. The competition she won, the record she set in shot put and discus, too many to list. She won the Suffolk County Championships four straight years, three consecutive Empire State Games champions, setting shot put records each year took part in the national championships from her sophomore to senior years, finishing in the top six each year. At the University of Houston, she threw for five years. She still holds shot put and discus records. That's not all. You will see along the way weightlifting photos. She earned a bench lift shirt of the 300 pound club for the University of Houston football team, the only female to do it in the history of the program. She benched 315 pounds. In 1988, Cheryl competed in the Women's Powerlifting Nationals. First place, she benched 253 pounds, a squat of 507, a deadlift of 424. This is why she is my bodyguard here tonight. Her friends and teammates have said, this is someone who loves life, loves people. She never says no to helping others, and she's doing it today on her job as sheriff, especially assisting young offenders, providing options and choices. Strength power, compassion. That describes a woman we are proud to induct into the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Cheryl Klein Obelar. greatest discoveries to find something you enjoy doing and then to find that you do it extremely well. As a young woman, I found that joy in the unexpected place, the shot put and discus circle. Track and field and my related endeavors in powerlifting have taken me to state, national, and world championships. Athletics put me through college, took me across the world, but none of those things could have been with that, so without the encouragement, coaching, support and love of others. Sorry, so we want to hear you. Oh, right here. Um, where was I? <laughs> if you'll permit me, I'd like to express my thanks to some of those people tonight. Thank you, Chris Vaccaro and the selection committee for the great honor and privilege to enter the Suffolk County Hall of Fame. I have no doubt my fellow inductees feel the same pride I do. Congratulations to you all. My, excuse me, my late parents would have been so proud. I smile when I think of my father, who being, man, being a man of his time, was not, was not too pleased in learning his teenage daughter was about to become a shot putter. <laughs> no, he said, no daughter of mine is throwing a shot put. <laughs> he said, that's a man's sport. Well, if there had been any doubt about what I would do, that ended it. I kept right on going to track practice and then track meets in secret and my folks uh, were none the wiser until my name started showing up in the news day. <laughs> you see, I was winning those meets. And suddenly my father rather liked the idea of his little girl throwing heavy objects. 
He said, that's my daughter to anyone within earshot. My mom, who showed me what hard work looked like, she taught me that nothing good comes easy and that countless hours of blood, sweat, and tears pay off. She showed me how to laugh and how to find joy and excitement in each experience. My parents attended every track meet that they possibly could. And when they couldn't, they waited by the phone to find out how I did. They were my biggest fans, my biggest supporters. They made me who I am. My interest and love of competition came from my four older brothers. If you want to teach a girl to fight for everything she's got, give her older brothers. <laughs> my brothers brought out my desire to excel and give me insight to what seemed to be a male-dominated world of sports. Older brothers also meant a supply of great sweatshirts. I borrowed many of them and probably never gave them back. Um, I've always been blessed with wonderful sister-in-laws, my sister-in-law Eva, Teresa, and especially Marilyn. You know me since I was five years old and have always had a great impact on my life. Teachers are a major influence in anyone's life, and I'm grateful for those that have guided mine. When I didn't believe in myself or needed some encouragement, there was a teacher there. A rebellious nature and a shortage of self-assurance had, had me in resource room classes in middle school. But teachers and coaches stuck by me. I graduated high school and accepted a full athletic scholarship to the University of Houston. They prepared me well. I set and still hold the university records in the shot put and discus, and I graduated with honors with a degree in criminal justice. Today I work proudly in law enforcement, as you all know, along with my husband, Juan. He is, he's a canine officer. Thank you, Juan. Where are you? <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight to share the awesome experience with me. I love you always because of your support in everything I choose to do in life. Had it not been for one of the teachers I mentioned, I most likely would never have been part of the track team. Les Williams was my ninth grade, he was my ninth grade social studies teacher. And he was the head coach of the track team. He approached me after class one day and encouraged me to try out for the team. I was hesitant at first, but something inside me told to go that day. I'm glad I did. Thank you, Coach Williams. I'd also like to thank coaches Joe Sipp, Coach Roy Still, Greg Chavius, John Conquest, Coach Erickson, and all my teammates, classmates, for their support. Jeff Willis, where are you? Thank you. And finally, my deep and sincere thanks to my coach and friend, Fred Amadeo. He is here tonight, all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada. He retired, and that's where he retired. Had it not been for his sustained efforts and sacrifice, I could not have accomplished a fraction of what I had. Coach gave up sleeping in, in on Saturdays, sacrificed time with his family and friends to help me to do my best. He taught me to never give up and push me when I needed it the most. Thank you for being a big part of my journey. You are, always, you are not only a great field event coach, but a great friend. You will always be very special to me, and I love you. I've had a lot of success, three state championships, three-time All-American, outstanding performer at the Penn Relays, four-time Colgate Game Championship, national powerlifting champion. I'm grateful for that success, but most thankful for the people with whom I've shared the journey with. Home is where your people are, and it's good to be home tonight. Thank you.
Time now for our next inductee as we bring you our inaugural award for lifetime achievement. Hold on a second. Ted Morris, Ned Morton, Ed Morris. Ed Morris, could you come up, please? Ed Morris. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. All right, don't start. Don't start that video yet. We got a few things to say first. A special introduction right now. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think of someone, I'm being serious, when you think of someone who has meant so much to Suffolk County, someone who has spent years in public service and spent so many of these years giving back to the community in so many ways, someone who has supported sports at a local level and the opportunities it provides youngsters, athletes, coaches, and administrators, someone who has touched so many lives along the way, a family man who has become a part of the family of all of us, a man of great humor, a tremendous and loyal friend. When you think of such a person, you think, of course, of George Walbauer, who is sitting over there. But we're not here to talk about him tonight. For some reason, we're giving this Lifetime Achievement Award to Eddie Morris. That's right, Eddie. For all the things you've ever said about me, I'm turning this into a roast. So just stand there. Some people... Some people say Eddie is full of himself, a tiresome blabbermouth who just keeps on yapping and doesn't know when to stop. There's nothing else that I have to say about that. It's just what people say. Uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award is usually presented to someone in any field who doesn't have much lifetime left. That is not true with Eddie. I mean, just look at him. What a physical specimen. The fact that he has so totally and utterly disregarded a healthy lifestyle and is still walking <laughs> is obviously giving us all hope. <laughs> Nonetheless, we want to hurry this along just to make sure he's still here when I'm done with my introduction. <laughs> Eddie actually has lost lots of weight over the years. I'm not kidding. He's lost a great deal of weight. So much, in fact, the weight he's lost is being bar mitzvahed next week. That's how much. Wait, he has lost. That's right, Eddie. Uh, I tell you, roses are red, violets are bliss. Here we go, Eddie, time for your bliss. Here we go. If you know Eddie Morris at all, you know one thing. He knows everyone, the most well-connected man on the planet. If you walked up to Eddie tonight and said, listen, Ed, <laughs> I got a penguin in my backyard who needs his nails done. Eddie would say to you, no problem, I know a guy who knows a guy. And then tomorrow, a penguin manicurist would show up on your front step. All of us are connected to this wonderful and generous, if not marginally good-looking man. So, and so, after this huge and totally undeserved buildup, time for another bus ride. Here we go. Now, doesn't that Eddie Morris, the cartoon, look better than the real Ed? There he is, waving Chris Vaccaro off, saying he's already, already ordered an Uber. The brief. Ed Morris bio, from Sachem High School, the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame, the outstanding Suffolk PAL baseball complex, and so much in between. We bring you some of the many highlights of all he's done. You are about to enjoy Eddie's incredible photo gallery, some of the many sports stars who were fortunate enough to have their photos taken with Eddie. A graduate of the class of 1967 at Sachem, from there to Suffolk Community College. At age 22, the Suffolk County Sheriff's Department as Deputy Sheriff, Graduating from the Suffolk County Police Academy at the top of his class, they must have graded on a huge curve. <laughs> Numerous awards and citations during his 30-year law enforcement career. He retired in 1999 as undersheriff. In 1992, Eddie served on the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame Board of Directors and was named executive director in 2000. Look at all those photos and celebrities. Eddie also spearheaded the successful effort to open a museum and learning center in downtown Patchog, which he did in October of 2008. The collapse of the national economy caused financial trouble everywhere. The museum closed in 2013, but with Ed at the helm, the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame survived, opening its exhibit at Long Island MacArthur Airport, the Southwest Airlines Terminal, and another exhibit at the home of the Long Island Ducks, Bethpage Ballpark. His tireless efforts have kept this Hall of Fame alive. 
his accomplishments everywhere, too numerous to mention. But 1990, he was appointed to the Board of Directors of the Suffolk County PAL. In 1995, Commissioner of PAL Baseball, he raised and oversaw the funds and construction of the 1,200-seat baseball stadium at the PAL Complex in Holbrook, something he and so many of us are proud of. Ed has brought the National Wounded Warriors amputee softball team to Suffolk to play exhibition games here, raising funds and awareness for our wounded but undaunted heroes. He retired as Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame Executive Director last year, but will always be a major part of what we do here now and in the future. He's been married to Lorraine for 50 years. She deserved the plaque, not him. Three terrific children, five grandchildren, those of us lucky enough, blessed to call him friend, are extended members of his family. Ladies and gentlemen, the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame presenting its inaugural Lifetime Achievement Award, Edward J. Morris. If I uh, knew it was going to be a roast, I would have had a different speech to make. <laughs> David is the only guy who is more full of you-know-what than me. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. George Walbauer is in the audience. <laughs> but let me start off by first um, thanking David. Uh, thanking, thank you, David. David has been um, serving as MC for as long as I've been the uh, executive uh, uh, director of the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame. 18 years, not 17, 18 years. I went on the board of directors in 1992. My good buddy and law enforcement buddy, George Walbauer, asked me to come aboard. And I became a board member in 1992. And for seven or eight years, it was a handful of guys sitting in a church in Smithtown, upstairs in a small little room, drinking a few beers, and discussing athletes in Suffolk County. And then in 1999, a good friend named John Canis, CEO of Northwalk Bank back then, donated a building in Patchogue to the Hall of Fame. And from that point on, I had just retired from the Sheriff's Department after 30 years, and George asked me to uh, consider taking off as executive director now that we had a, uh, a formal a building uh, and, a, and an entire organization. I at first said no. I thought, well, after all the years and all the days I was away from my family, maybe I would stay home with my wife. And you know, <laughs> you know, talk at breakfast and you know, stuff like that. I retired on December 17th, and the day after January 1st, three weeks maybe, I was sitting at the kitchen table and my wife says, uh, you know, is that job still open that you offered you? <laughs> yeah, I think so, let me get, make a call. Yeah, I gotta leave, I go, where are you going? I got the new job. And 18 years later, I'm here. But let me start off by thanking uh, Chris Vaccaro for uh, taking over the position. And so far, I think you're all in agreement. Looks like he's done a pretty good job. So I want to thank the Board of Directors and Induction Committee for honoring me tonight. I appreciate it. It w wasn't expected. Believe me, it wasn't. And I appreciate it very much. I'd like to give a few thank yous out. First off, for the board of directors that served under me for a good portion of those 18 years, a long time eight or nine year president of our board of directors, Bobby Brown. Bobby's here, thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Our vice president, you heard a little bit about him. He's a good old friend of mine for a lot of years. Um, he's the executive director for probably well over 30 years of the Suffolk County Police Athletic League, my buddy, George Walbauer. <laughs> Our treasurer and secretary for years is still on the board serving with Chris today. He couldn't be here, Mike Lenegro, but his father, Rich 
who was also on our board for several years and retired. Rich Lenego is here. And uh, Rich, it's great to see you. I hope you're, you're feeling as good as you look. By the way, uh, Rich is the proprietor of Port Jeff Sporting Goods. So uh, keep that in mind when you're looking to buy some uniforms for your team. He's a great guy. And of course, there was the only female we had on our board, Lois, Lois Cloud Melanzac. Lois, thanks so much. And Lois <laughs> is serving on the board with Chris right now. There was Chris DeWire and Dennis Donovan. And then there was a fellow named Mike Ryan, who I don't think Mike's here tonight. I know his son is here. Mike was on our board for years, was a great supporter. He is uh, the proprietor, owner of Lantake, Lantech, which builds a lot of the ball fields here in Suffolk County, high schools, Nassau County, all over the country. NFL stadiums, they do a great job. Mike was, I know Mike for 25 years, 25 years ago when we were building the PAL stadium, Mike donated his time and services uh, free of cost. And that's the type of guy he is. Mike Ryan, thanks so much for my Mike. And then I'd like to thank somebody. I took a lot of, for 18 years, I took a lot of credit for a person who was really the backbone of the Suffolk Sports Hall of Fame. She's been my friend since we're teenagers, 13, 14 years old, and she's here tonight. She came up from Delaware, where she's living now, Nancy Hines, my assistant for 18 years. Stand up, Nancy. Nancy. Nancy's the best, I love her. I would like to thank one or two elected officials over the years who've been very good to the Sports Hall of Fame. And the one person who is outstanding in, in youth programs and supporting and, and a generosity with uh, his title, Cesar Trunzo, Senator Cesar Trunzo from Islip. He passed away a few years ago. But this guy did everything for the Hall of Fame, PAL, and so many other groups, and I really wanted to recognize him. I'd like to thank former Congressman Mike Forbes, former Congressman Tim Bishop, former Suffolk County Legislator Presiding Officer Bill Lindsay, Sr., County Executive Steve Ballone, and a great guy, Ed Romaine, the supervisor of the town of Brookhaven, who's been so helpful with the Wounded Warriors amputee softball team playing on the Brookhaven town fields. I'd like to thank all the volunteers over the years, and many of them are here. My sister, my favorite sister, Tricia, my brother Johnny, his wife Betty, Bill Senia, all these people are volunteers who helped out at all of our events, and I appreciate it very much. There are two people who I really want to thank, two inductees of this Hall of Fame, who no matter what you asked of them, they always came forward and gave it their all. They're two great people. Marty Lyons, I think Marty's still here. Marty, Marty Lyons. Marty, thank you so much, Marty. Marty runs the Marty Lyons Foundation, does so much for so many kids who, uh, who are looking for their last wishes. He's a great guy. I had the honor of being honored by the Marty, Marty Lyons Foundation with the Leon Hess Award back a few years ago. Marty, I appreciate all the time and effort you've given to this Hall of Fame, and I hope you continue with Chris. Thank you, Marty. The other person is Buddy Harrelson. And Buddy, I'll tell you, there's nobody like him. If you ask Buddy in 19, I think it was 1991, I asked Buddy to come out to Eastport High School where my, my boys were uh, attending high school there, and we ran a, a golf tournament for them. There had been, their athletic booster club had been running fundraisers for years, and the most money they ever raised was $725. And I ran a golf tournament, and I'll never forget it. First off, I had the whole New York Islanders team out there back in those days, a bunch of retired guys, and Pat LaFontaine, Bobby Nystrom, a whole bunch of guys. And I asked Buddy to come out, and Buddy came out wearing a Mets jersey, sat there all day. By the way, this was in April. I did it during the Easter break. The weather was like 28 degrees. Buddy sat out there all day long signing autographs, 
At that point, he was the, I believe he was still the manager of the New York uh, Mets. I met Buddy in 1986 at a golf tournament for PAL. I'll tell you what my foursome on that day's event was Buddy Harrelson. He brought a, a young shortstop with him who had just been called up to the Mets two months before, Kevin Elster.